thank you for investing this time into yourself. I know as a business owner, it's really scary right now. The times that we're in, um, it's unprecedented. We don't know what's going on. So if you guys could just let me know in the chat, um, if you don't know how to use the chat, um, it's right down at the bottom. There's a little bubble, just hit the button and then just let me know what kind of business you own, um, where you're coming from, um, where you live in the country and um, any questions that you have, make sure that you can go there and you guys can all respond to each other's conversations as well. Um, so I'd love to see any questions that you have um, throughout this so that I can give you guys good, really good value. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here with you. So the reason I'm calling it that is because we may feel, um, we may feel like we're not really sure what to do. And it's sometimes easy to just go, oh, this is hard. Okay, it is hard. It's absolutely hard. Um, all of us are entrepreneurs. And because of that, um, we chose something hard, you know? So um, because of that, I wanna share just a little story with you. Um, this, is, this is me. This is the fall of 2008. Yes, that, 2008. And I accepted a crazy internship selling educational books door to door for the summer of 2009. Yes, that 2009. And little did I know I'd be sent off to Michigan where unemployment was at an all time high. People didn't have any money for extras. And I was actually, I was naive. I was young. You know, this was more than 10 years ago, but I had really good mentors. I had helpful teachers, people who had gone before me that I trusted. So that summer I worked 80 hours a week for three months straight, spoke to it like 30 families a day, six days a week. So that's over 2000 sales conversations in one summer. It was hard. I got yelled at. I had a few good cries. Of course I felt like giving up. Um, and, but remember I was really naive. I don't think I understood what was going on, um, in the economy at that time. So you know what happened? during a major recession where in Michigan, where the car industry is, tons of people are unemployed, people still bought. A lot of people actually, and these books were like $300 and I was selling them door to door. So what I learned though, and I learned way more about consumer behavior that summer, selling books door to door, than I ever learned in a classroom where I got my marketing degree. So I learned why people buy how they evaluate things, what they prioritize. That marketing is really all about them. You know, it's, it's not about, it's not about us as business owners. It's about our customers. And so that challenging experience at 21 years old gave me a huge perspective shift. If I could just allow them to talk, to share their pain points and problems, to hear their stories and connect with that, and then show them a solution they would buy every time. And crazy me, I went back and did that again the next summer. So what does this have to do with local business marketing today? I'm really glad you asked. <laughs> so there are two different types of business owners. There are those who crawl into a hole and just give up. They think, okay, this is so hard. I can't do this. I'm just going to like close down and like the world's coming to an end. And then, as we know, entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. And then there's those that problem solve. They get creative and figure it out. You guys, we can do this together and I'm going to give you some points, but I have to tell you, I have had so many conversations with my clients this week, like pep talk kind of conversations. And um, it's been really encouraging to me to see them taking action, to see them like actually doing things and taking steps. Like for example, one of my, um, one of my clients never wanted to do video. He was always like, okay, yes, I'll, I know I should do video, I'll do it. And yesterday he told me, he was like, well, I guess this is just the time I've got to do it. You know, I just got to make it happen, even though like I don't want to, um, because he knows that he has to be out there. And so that's called problem solving. That's just getting outside of our comfort zone. Um, so the next thing I want to share that with you guys is this little quote that I, this is actually a picture I took of a book from that year when I was selling books door to door. This is from my first summer and it's, something that I've always really remembered as being in sales and marketing. Um, fear is the little dark room where negatives are developed. And I learned that summer that action cures fear. So we've got a lot of fear. We're afraid. We're not totally sure what's going to happen. Um, 
But action, taking action is what cures that fear. So when I'd be knocking, like about to knock on a door and I'd be afraid, I would just like make myself knock. And then I'm like, well, crap, I just knocked on the door. They're going to answer. And then I'm going to talk to them. And then all of a sudden I'd feel like, oh, that wasn't so bad. It was fine. So if you're sitting on your hands right now, not sure what you should be doing, feeling the fear of losing your business and stressed about everything, trust me, you are not, you're not alone, by the way. You might be allowing fear to stop you from saving your business. And when I was afraid to go knock on a door, I just remembered that action cures fear. So I had to give you that little pep talk. And I want to get down to some strategic steps that you can be taking um, right away. Okay. So what I want to tell you to do is get creative with your marketing. I thought this was really funny and I thought you guys would all really like this. Um, you know, if you're a travel vlogger, you cannot travel and vlog. So this guy got really creative and uh, took a picture of himself with a toilet seat, which is extra funny because of the whole toilet paper thing, um, with his computer screen and like posted it. I just think this is creative and funny and he got a ton of engagement from it. Um, so is there anything you guys can tell me? Tell me in the comments. Is there any questions you guys have um, about like creative ideas? Is there anything um, that you can do? Um, okay, so I want to bring on a special guest. Um, his name is Matt Plapp, and I'm just going to find him here and the participants and make him share his screen. Matt Plapp is my business coach. He's a mentor. He has been in business for, I don't know, you have to tell me, you have to tell us. I'm going to let you, uh, I'm promoting you to panelist. Yeah, you know, I've been in business since 1999. I've had an a marketing firm since 2008. Unique perspective is I've been through two of these, not obviously virus oriented, but I've been through September 11th. I had a boat and RV dealership as well as worked in advertising at the time. And as you can imagine, people didn't buy advertising for a few months uh, after 9-11. It wasn't necessarily, actually about a month or two, but it wasn't necessarily because of they didn't want the business. It was that consumers were, scared. Uh, people had no clue what was going to happen from a standpoint of attacks, from a standpoint of uh, the economy. Uh, it was just a really weird time, especially the entire month of September. Uh, and then in 2008, I had a boat and RV dealership and I started my marketing firm. And it was, uh, we were selling the business. We were due to close on $3 million piece of property we owned, sell it. And I was going to have a million, million dollars in my pocket as a 32 year old. And the, that got pushed back to June. Then it got pushed back to July. Well, long story short, our business went from a million four in sales in July of 2007 to 48 grand in sales July of 2008. And the economy crashed the next month. And it was a tough time. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all got through it. And there's a lot of things that I noticed that people did during that time uh, that helped. So I think right now it's a different time as I as Tracy might mention, I, I work uh, with, I coach her, but I work with a lot of restaurants, hundreds nationwide, some of, one in Australia, some in the UK, a lot in Canada. And they're obviously everybody is crippled right now with what's happening. Uh, you know, you, you don't have dine in, you've got delivery and you've got, you know, curb service or carry out. I've got some clients that aren't seeing any effect. I got an ice cream shop that we work with that's having re a record week. Wow. Uh, hey, I think you can share your video now. Oh, okay. Let's see. Try. No, it still says cannot. You hit. You've got. It's a underneath, setting. It's a setting. In the up. webinar, I just changed. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm sorry. Okay. So let's see here. Choose video, Microsoft front. Yeah, it just still says I can't do it. But yeah, you know, the ice cream shop has had no issues. I've got a couple fast food clients, no issues. I've got. A lot of uh, fast, casual burrito, uh, taco, Mexican style, kind of Chipotle style restaurants that are down 30% this week. I've got some clients that are down 90%. You know, it, it's all across the board. But the biggest thing we're seeing where we're at is, and I guess where we're at, we're nationwide, but a lot in my region I can see is that dining is shut down and that businesses need to be visible. Uh, you've got you know, what we didn't have in 2008 when the economy collapsed with our boat and RV dealership, we didn't have Facebook. We didn't have, right. uh, actually we had Facebook on its infancy, but we didn't have uh, texting as it is now. We didn't have Instagram. We didn't have YouTube. I mean, they're, all of the items we have now that are free of charge, we didn't have them. And so if you're a, a restaurant operator right now, I mean, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, get on LinkedIn and start having conversations. Get on LinkedIn and look up people in your area 
that have businesses and message them, hey, are you guys still working? Yeah, we're still working, great. We'd love to feed your team. One of my restaurant owners is a barbecue joint in Arkansas, and they spent all of Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday calling local hospitals, medical clinics, doctor's offices, fire departments, police stations, and EMT because they're all trapped there. Yeah. They're all, and, and they've started take, setting up delivery orders and taking orders up for 20 doctors, 20 nurses. And, you know, it, you know they made deals. They, they cut deals. They had some expense to do it. But at the end of the day, they're just trying to capture whatever they can capture. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So what, um, let's talk about a couple strategies that like specifically local businesses can do like right now. I, I want to share something that one of my, um, clients is doing that. I know you're encouraging them to do. And that is like, take a chance to actually make video about their business, about their staff. Um, don't be afraid to like record yourself. So I have a client in Dallas, um, one of my lemon sharks that he made a video uh, recording himself taking a phone order and then um, recording like how to build a poke bowl and then walking it out to a car. So we had this strategy call earlier this week and you know, it's like a ghost town outside, right? Like they're not allowed to do dine in. So we had to come up with a way to like do that. So I asked him to make some videos. He did it on his phone. You guys, like, it wasn't like I asked him to hire a video production crew. You know, he just had somebody hold a cell phone and record him. Yeah. Oh, it's, it, it's great. It's, you know, the technology, the quality of a video, the organic nature of it. The biggest thing you can also do is put a face with your business. You know, a lot of consumers have this thought process that, hey, so-and-so, po the, the Poke Bowl shop down the street, you know, Lemon Shark, you know, oh, that's a huge corporation. They're in a sky rise in New York. They're billionaires. Well, no, it's more than likely a, a lady and a husband that are in your kids, minor, their little league baseball team, they go to the same yeah. church. You know, one of my clients, Patrick, one time had a bad review on one of his restaurants. He's got like 11, I think now, but one of them, he had a really bad review and the person made it seem like he was a billionaire and he commented, he goes, Hey, I, I looked at your profile, by the way, we go to the same church. I live here locally. My kids play my little league baseball. Your negative experience is, un, is, is not something we want and it does affect us and it affects our, our employees and everything. Yeah. But a lot of businesses hide behind generic social media. They hide behind the graphics they get from corporate. They hide behind Photoshopped pictures. They never show Christy who works at cash register. They never show Luis who's the head chef. They never show the manager. One of my clients, Coconut Kenny's, if you follow them on Facebook, they do an amazing job. They've been putting product together. And if you watch their videos they've got on Facebook, those are done on an iPhone and with a couple editing apps. And they've got videos of as simple as the person at the cash register taking the order, walking out to the car, dropping the pizza off. So put people's faces on it. Let people realize that them supporting you supports that 25-year-old single mother. Right. Totally. Yeah. And I think that people... I think that people in the community want to support local businesses and they may just not know how they don't really know how. So it's okay. I want to give everybody permission. It's okay to, to tell them to support you, ask them to support you. It's okay. Like it's, it, it, we kind of wonder like, should I keep marketing? Like it feels a little awkward, like to keep marketing. But the thing is, is like people are spending money. Just like the story I shared in 2008. Um, yes, people didn't have money, but people will spend if it's, if their priorities are right and food, hello, they have to eat, you know, that's important. Um, but I want to also shift gears a little bit, Matt, because I have a client that isn't a restaurant that we've had to kind of brainstorm for because they really aren't going to have brick and mortar visitors right now. Um, they're in an escape room. And of course, like people can't go to an escape room right now. That's like obviously in close quarters, touching everything. So um, what, we've been, what we've been doing for them is coming up with a gift card strategy for selling gift cards on his website. And so um, we're doing this whole like, pay now, play later. That was something he actually came up with. And I thought that was really smart. Um, is saying like, pay now, play later. Please support our local business. And um, we're actually using um, Facebook ads with a little bit of a, a chat conversation to get people to sign up for that. We're giving them a little bit of a bonus voucher when they buy one of those. No, I love it. I think it right now, the biggest thing to keep in mind also is people are in their house. Uh, my mm -hmm. wife is home more than ever. I'm at home right now. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm usually home two days a week during the week, but three days a week I'm at my office. 
uh, but I've been home more this week. I've been on my phone more often. I've been on my iPad. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Uh, yep. and, and the attitude has changed a lot. You know, it used to be, if this was this time, you know, what, four years ago, people would be arguing about politics. Right now, they're supporting each other and they're having conversations and they're sharing cool stuff. Like I keep seeing today, people sharing pictures of people putting Christmas lights up uh, to kind of bring a happier mode in the neighborhood. Uh -huh. And so you've got free opportunities. There's a lot of eyeballs. And the biggest problem you can have is number one, not taking advantage of it from a standpoint of being visible, no matter what business you are, because this yeah. is going to end. It's got to end in about six to eight weeks. I mean, everything I've seen from studying China, studying South Korea, studying Italy, uh, research, friends of mine that know way too much about data, uh, they need probably better <laughs> hobbies, is that this is going to peak between April, uh, April 5th, to April 10th in, the United, in our United States, and it's going to start going down around April 14th, and May 1st, we're going to be looking happy, and June 1st, everything's back to normal to some extent. And so yeah. if you're just going to sit on your hands and waste the 20, 30 extra hours a week, people are going to be on the phone. It's just, it's not a good idea. And whether you're selling gift cards or selling reservations in the future uh, or getting, you know, one of my clients is having a big success selling hats, shirts, and barbecue sauce and bottles. You know, <laughs> it's items they have, it's Chosky stuff. And it's like, hey, every time, every one of these you buy, 100% of the cash goes to pay an employee. Like he said, every shirt he sells pays an employee salary for, uh, for one day or for one yeah. hour. So, there's a lot of opportunity there uh, from a standpoint sure. of getting that. And then also the more visible you are when this does come out, the more people are top of mind. I mean, the last thing you want to do is not be on anybody's radar. And then all of a sudden they haven't eaten at your restaurant or come in your business right. in six weeks and they're let out that you know, the cages are open and they forget about you. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, I have DJ here. I wanted to bring him on. He is, um, he and his wife, Emily own lemon shark in Sandy Springs, Georgia. And, um, so I wanted to bring him on here to kind of share a little bit about that because like you said, I don't know why they own a business and, um, they own a couple other businesses. So, um, I'm going to have them, have them share a little bit about just encouragement and, um, just kind of like what they're doing, um, to, Make this make this happen. What are, what are you guys doing? So yeah, DJ Emily, if you guys just want to share, I haven't figured out how to get the video on here. So sorry about can that. Can you hear me, Tracy? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, this is DJ, obviously. Um, so yeah, we. Um, I mean, obviously, Tracy, I think you've been instrumental in helping us kind of dial in on a marketing campaign right now. Um, the gift card. You mentioned the gift card strategy. I think. You know, what I'm hearing, not just from you, um, you know, our landlord is very involved with us as well, trying to help us kind of weather the storm. Um, we're on That's the awesome. ground floor of um, a, an apartment building in uh, the suburb closest to Atlanta. And what they mentioned today, too, that kind of hit home is the um, importance of really dialing in on your social media campaign right now. And, and much like Matt mentioned, so many people are on their phone right now. They're bored to tears. Um, and they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram. And so I think expanding whatever social media platform or advertising campaign you're currently doing, look to exponentially increase it um, and, you know, get creative with it. One of the things sure. we're doing that the landlord's working with us on is we're going to do, we're going to do like a giveaway one, you know, one gift card a week. And we're going to post a little, you know, pokey centric quiz. And we, we have a beer wall as well. Um, so we're going to tie it into the pokey and our beer that we offer. Um, and we're going to incorporate it into the community, into the apartments that are around us. Um, and, and again, just try anything new and creative to drive, you know, foot traffic. Um, we're offering a discount for curbside pickup. Um, if you come in and utilize that service. Um, I may have so, just figured out how to let you share your video. Want to try? Okay. Sure. Why not? <laughs> I think I might've just found the setting. <gasps> I can see you. <laughs> Yay. It's a small, tidy little setting. Um, so, so how are you doing curbside pickup? Cause I know you mentioned that DJ, how are you doing curbside pickup? Because I think a lot of um, people, they don't have, they're not set up for that. You know, they're not like a typical drive through. So how are you, how are you handling that? Yeah. Luckily I think the, um, how our um, store is set up in the community uh, lends itself well to curbside. We literally, I'm looking outside now, I'm 10, I'm 10 feet away from the curb, our front door. 
Um, we actually don't have any front parking. The parking is in the garage of our apartment right. building that we're located okay. in. So our, our store is just set up a little bit differently that allows us to capitalize on that. Um, and we're a little, a little off street, literally, you know, 20 steps away from a major, major intersection here in Sandy Springs, Georgia. So we benefit from a lot of traffic on the roads. It's a little less these days than usual, but, um, yeah. um, but no, I think we're trying, and we're going to start pushing that on social media even more to help capitalize on that. Natalie's working with us um, on kind of getting that message out too, to help yeah. drive some more business that way. Yeah, which is awesome because I think I've, I've had two different types of people I've talked to. Some are like, okay, we have to pull back all marketing dollars and, you know, we have to save that money and pinch those pennies and make sure that we don't go out of business. Right. And then I've got like another client, he's on this call. He was like, no, here's $500 more, put that to marketing. Like I need to make sure that people know we're still open. Um, and you know, I won't call him out, but he owns a dry cleaners and not used to like being on video. And the last couple of days he's been doing videos, live videos. And I'm just like, like, I almost got a little, this sounds weird, but I almost got a little teary eyed this morning, just seeing this video. And he's just like asking the community to support. And I was just like, that was such a good video. I mean, he was walking around, um, walking around the dry cleaners and showing his staff and like, people love that. People want to see like who the owners are. And I was just like, so inspired that you're actually like doing it. You know, you're, you're putting more money into it. You're actually making, making changes and like yeah. continuing to market, you know? There we, there we go. go. Okay. There we right. go. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to your wife earlier and she was just, um, she was like, yeah, yeah, we're going to have DJ be the one on video. So um, yeah. <laughs> now you guys she's have better, another business. You better looking than me. She should be the one up there. <laughs> Uh, can we talk about your other business and you have another business that you have in right. town, right? The cryotherapy. Yeah, yeah, we own, yeah. We own a cryotherapy studio as well. Okay. So what are you guys doing differently now with that? Well, we shut down for two weeks. Um, and that was a franchise decision, um, from the franchisor. Um, and we plan to open back up on April 1st. I think we're straight again, social media is one of the few ways to stay engaged right now. So we're yeah. trying to do that. Um, but I think one of the things we're going to benefit, I, I think anything in the health and wellness space is going to benefit from what's going on right now. I think people's mindsets after this whole mess is that we've got to take care of our health. Um, you know, that's one component of cryotherapy, a benefit. So we're going to be pushing that extremely hard. And I think anybody in the food service, Pokey, you know, I, we own a Pokey restaurant. I think Pokey is thought of as a healthy, quick food option. And yeah. I think we're going to be pushing that big time. Um, as sure. people start to kind of come back out and, and, and come to the restaurant. We want to promote the healthy aspect of pokey as much as possible. Sure. Well, and Matt and I were talking um, about this, but like right now people are stuck at home. Like you can see I'm in my living room. I ordered, I don't know if you guys have heard of dream dinners. It's like this thing where you get the meal prep and it's like 12 meals and like you cook them and like they're going to, it's going to be great, but I'm going to get tired of eating at home. And so the first thing people are going to think of doing is ordering pizza to go, right? Because mm -hmm. that's what they're used to ordering. Um, people, it's just a natural thing. Like, let me get pizza or El Pollo Loco, like fried chicken or whatever. And then they're going to be like, okay, I, we've been eating pizza. We've been eating fried stuff. Like we need something healthy that, so that we actually feel good. And then if Lemon Shark had stopped marketing over those week or two, while people are eating junk, then they're not even going to think of you. But if you're continuing to market, even though you're going to take a slight dip in sales right now, um, you continue to market, people are going to go, oh yeah, Lemon Shark's been posting or they've been texting me or emailing me because you have an email list now. You know, um, one thing that I also wanted to talk about was having, why it's important to have a list. If you're just, you know, trying to post on social media along with everybody else, um, it's harder to reach your, your actual customers, like your what am I saying? Engage customers. But because you already have an email list, a text list, I think you have about a thousand people on that list now that we've built in the last couple of months. We can, we're actually like going to be able to send out an email and a text to them and say, Hey, come get curbside service. Here's our offer. Make sure to come in and support us to go. Yeah. And I, I am no so social media guru. Emily is way better at it than me. And, <laughs> and Matt and Tracy, I'm sure you both are way more well-versed in this, but I think one of the things we're doing for cryotherapy, which I don't know how this could be incorporated into Pokey, but we're spending a lot of money on Google right now for those people that are out searching for boosting your immune system, 
Um, you know, the, sure. you know, it's a big topic of conversation right now, obviously. So that's one of the things we're doing for the cryotherapy business as well is, you know, how can we capitalize on what might be a mindset shift as a result of this whole thing, at least in the short term? Yeah. Um, so. Sure. Well, and, and since you brought that up, I actually have a slide here. I was going to talk about the difference between interruption marketing versus intent marketing. And I remember you and I, when we first met, that's something I shared with you. Um, and I think you said that that really resonated with you. So it's kind of funny that you brought that up. Um, let me, let me share that with y'all. Hey, Tracy, um, so, something, yeah. he could, something he could do for the cryo business also, because you know, I own a gym as well. My second business, I'm a partner in a gym and have been since 2013 is, I mean, your customers are typically like the people that go for my gym that go to cryo or marathoners or hardcore crossfitters. Uh, or some of our older members who are just looking to stay healthy, find those gyms in your area and start sharing their at-home workouts. Because every gym, at least where I'm at, is shut down by mandate. And friends of mine in other states that aren't shut down went ahead and shut down. Mm -hmm. So share their at-home workouts and tell your customers, hey, you're staying, you're staying in shape at home. Here's what XYZ CrossFit is doing today. Here's their at-home workout. Sure. And that might be a good way to leverage yeah. the community. Absolutely. It's a really good idea. And Matt, I'll, I'll tell you, we, we focused big time on that and just the buildup of the cryotherapy business. We started cryo about a year and a half ago. And I would tell anybody, you know, that's advertising or marketing in the social media space, a great way to kind of build your network is to show the love to the other small businesses in your community, because then they'll start promoting you as well. So now's a great time to start incorporating that if you aren't already. Yeah, for sure. I'm just putting this in the chat, but if any of you are watching, I have a lot of my clients on here, a lot of potential um, other business owners that are not sure about what to do. If you guys have questions, definitely put them here in the, in the chat and Matt and I can try to answer those for you. Um, if there's something that you want to know and sure that you're doing that's different than something we talked about, absolutely um, jump on there. Um, so while I'm waiting for that, I want to, I want to share this little slide real quick. Um, just like a quick little idea, just because a lot of people don't necessarily understand, like, when do I do Google ads? When do I do social media ads? And so here's kind of how. So social media ads are interruption marketing. You're interrupting their normal day with your message. So someone's just scrolling through Facebook. They're looking at funny cat videos. They're looking at all the stuff about the virus, right? They're bored. They're scrolling. And then all of a sudden your ad shows up. So think about that when you're creating an ad or a post, how is this going to look in the middle of like them scrolling through? So it needs to be something that's going to catch their attention. Bright colors is great because everything on Facebook is white and blue, right? So if you have like green or red, it's actually really great for lemon shark because your colors of your food are bright and colorful, but adding like a border if you need to, to like make it pop. Um, so you want to give them a no brainer offer that they can't resist and have a strong call to action. So that's interruption marketing. You want to also make sure that you're providing value. So like if you're a salon, you know, right now you can't necessarily do people's hair. And I have this style called balayage. I had to learn what that was. My stylist educated me and said, um, was teaching me about it because it was a good thing for somebody like me who works a lot. I can't go every six weeks to get my hair cut, right? So educating them and the process showing like how you work before and after photos. And if you're doing that now, before, like when things go back to normal, then you're going to be showing up for them. So that's social media. If we're doing Google ads, that's more intent marketing. So people are Googling healthy food near me, like poke near me or Mexican food near me. They're searching, um, if you're like a coffee shop, like local coffee shop, things like that. Um, so they're searching for something you're offering and then they see your website and actually your social media will be one of the top things in search. Um, social media has a lot of SEO and some rich content. So these ads don't really fill out of place because somebody's seeking out information. So I just want to share because um, how can you be a service to people is how you should be coming across in all of your ads. So yes, you're selling them something. You want them to come and buy your food um, or come to your eye cleaner or whatever, but you're still serving them. Um, for something that they need. So just want to see if you got any, any thoughts on that, any, anything that you're doing like related to Google versus Facebook ads. Nothing on my end. We, uh, all of our clients were 100% Facebook, Instagram, email, messenger, text, uh, some of the other stuff. I say one thing I, that I think is a huge missed opportunity. And it's kind of funny that it happened for the first time uh, yesterday 
there's a coffee shop I go to near my office called Coffee Emporium. One of my favorite places to go. It's an amazing business. And it cracks me up because I go there three days a week for the last two years. I put my card in there. It texts me my points, all that. They have my phone. They have my email. They have everything. So yesterday, I'm in, the, in there, and I saw the manager. I said, can you do me a favor? She goes, what? I said, get your owner to pull, go into your database and your point of sale and pull it out and send an email and tell people how you can buy your coffee to take home. I said, I've been talking about this for months. I've done like five videos on it. You've probably seen one, Tracy, where I'm talking about how they don't use their database. They've got my information. I never get a message about anything. And they sell coffee, they sell mugs, they sell port, the, the pour over stuff. Sure enough, an hour later, email, first one ever. And I'm like, why not? The data is in there. My Better Blend, the, the nutrition smoothie shop near my house. Isaac was a member of my a guest on my pod or my webinar two nights ago. They have my information. He's never texted anybody. He's got this new online system. I can promise you all of the companies in here, you've probably got data somewhere that you don't realize that you're sitting on. So quit sitting on it. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, definitely want to make sure that we're utilizing. There's no point in building a database if we're not. So um, I know another one of my clients is on here um, that Keith, I don't know, Keith, if you want to jump in on, on this, but we, we have sent out an email to his list because currently dine-in in California is not closed. We're still allowed to dine-in. So we're still sending out like we're encouraging curbside and we're encouraging pickup delivery and things like that. I just want to know what are you guys doing to work with those third party vendors? Cause I know um, they charge a larger commission. So how do we encourage curbside, you know, versus delivery or do we even care at this point? We just want people to come. Um, what are you guys doing? Um, do you think you were saying they were negotiating with you on rates? Um, for the curbside, mm -hmm. um, we were going to provide a discount. We're we're figuring out what that discount is right now. I'm actually talking with Natalie about it. Um, <clears throat> but as far as the the delivery services, I mean, all of them have waived delivery fees to my knowledge up to this point. I know a couple of them are waiving commissions. I'm trying to think of which. Maybe it's uh, DoorDash. DoorDash is waiving commissions. So I think they're going to they're fielding enough like phone all calls. All of it. Um, I believe so i'd have to double check but i got a message from one of our catering um easy cater is waving all um granted they're not doing a whole lot of business right now but um they're waving all commissions i think for a period of time so yeah. call them find out negotiate i think if anything enough phone calls you know they get enough phone calls and they get the message so yeah that's true yeah one, of, one of my clients one of my clients that has 108 110 stores now uh, they have the same thing. We just heard this morning, but it was, uh, uh, where's that? Which brand is it? You got it written down here somewhere. DoorDash. DoorDash got rid of all fees. And it's smart on their part. If you're DoorDash and Grubhub and Uber and Postmates and Uber Eats, you're, the people using your service that have never used it before right now is going to be at an all-time high. You might as well get them addicted to it and accustomed to it. This is their advertising. Hey, we're going to spend all of our money in the next – 45 days, millions of dollars in waiving fees and paying drivers to deliver food for free for us. That's their advertising. So if they're smart, they're all waving it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I see some comments here. Um, Maria Wynn works at corporate for Lemon Chart and she's saying she's asked franchisees to no negotiate with third party and then Postmates is currently offering waived fees in certain markets. Thanks, Maria. Um, so Keith is also saying, um, so Keith is with Annie's Cafe saying he hasn't used third party delivery services at Carolyn's. However, you signed up with DoorDash, Grubhub, and Postmates. So that's good that you're offering a lot of different things because they're all advertising for you. You know, they actually are like, people are like looking on Postmates or they're looking on DoorDash to try to find different options. So um, that's really good. And somebody asked on the chat uh, about being fine dining. Uh, it was, I think Keely, maybe? I want to say Kelly, but I think it was Keely. Oh, there she is. Up to this point, she's got dine in, have third party service. However, we signed up. I mean, my one of my high end clients I work with has went to just a Saturday Sunday because they they can't do dine anymore, uh, and they don't really do third party because I mean they are a high end restaurant. Uh, but they've gone to prepared meals Saturday and Sunday where they're pre selling it all week, 
And then at three to four thirty on Saturday and Sunday, people can pick it up and they've got their dinner for the night that they can pop in for like five or 10 minutes in the oven. And it's, it's ready to rock and roll. So that's an yeah. opportunity, but also gift cards. And one guy sell a lot of gift cards. Uh, he started a dining club. Hey, spend this much money. Uh, and he's only going to do a limited. I think he's doing like uh $200 a month for a hundred customers. And that gets you a, a meal every week value of, you know, 400 bucks a month. And he just did it. He said, Hey, I'm doing this just to make sure the people that aren't working are going to get paid correctly. And right. he said, he'll, you think about it, you do the math on that. If you're fine dining, you get 200 people to pay 200 bucks right then, you know, you're going to ramp up some revenue pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. The goal would be to keep the cash flow going. Um, I think, I think one thing with the gift cards is it, it feels overwhelming to a lot of these. It's like, okay, now I got to start this whole new thing. Um, I actually have a, um, if you already have a chat bot kind of set up, I already have like a little flow that we can put together on your page for buying gift cards and they can actually buy it right there in messenger. So um, if you guys want to talk to me about that um, after just send me a message and we can get that set up where people will just pay you directly through messenger and then they either come and pick up the gift card or, um, you can mail it to them. This is like a physical one. If you have a way to buy, sell them online and email it to them, that's a whole separate system, but this would be a great way to just like get something up and going. Um, and then also we get them as a subscriber because we're getting them to message you and they're giving us their email. So um, that's something that we want to talk to a lot of you about um, as we're kind of figuring this out <laughs> all together, right? <laughs> we're all here figuring this out together. Um, so yeah, I know we've got a few other different types of businesses on here as well. Um, I see like a contractor and you know, there's a carpet store and different people like that. So one thing I just want to make sure that you guys all know before, um, before we hang up here is that it's really important that you continue marketing, that you continue staying in front of your audience and that you're not like letting yourself just like give up on not posting. So running ads, actually putting a little more money into ads right now would be smart in order to, so that whenever this is all kind of blowing over that we're able to like pick back up and people will think of you. We'll all celebrate together, you know, when this is over and people are coming back in because they're so cooped up and tired of being in their house. So I definitely want to encourage you all to do that. If you have any questions, of course, you can always send me a message. Um, you can send me an email or send me a message on social media. Um, Matt is a great resource as well. Um, so I appreciate you guys sharing and being willing to come here and, um, just kind of share with people what you're doing. And a couple quick things that came across my desk this morning. I've got a private group for my clients. I never would have thought of one of them was like, Hey, I called direct TV yesterday and I've got two months. I've got unlimited cancellation. Like it's canceled short term. He's like, didn't even cross my mind till I'm in my showroom and nobody's in there, my dining room and TVs are on. And I'm like, man, this, this cost me money. And so he called that. He changed his dumpster service from every other day to once a week. Uh, his, he has CentOS. He had CentOS turned off because no use to deliver mats for his, you know, and all the stuff they do in the show or his dining room. Uh, that was a big thing. So look at some of your bills that might not be as much. My gym, we have CentOS. And the first thing I, when I saw his post this morning, I'm like, oh crap, <laughs> CentOS delivers us twice a week at our gym. Our first aid kit's not going to be needed to be filled because it's not, there's nobody there. And trust me, CentOS will fill it. Like I'll come in and there'll be like 20 extra items. And I'm like, they want to bill for two, 300 bucks. So you know, be smart about those things. Go back and look through your, your debit card, look through your checking account and see who you wrote checks to the last month. And there's probably a handful in there that you could pause for 30 or 60 days. Yeah. That's really good advice for sure. Um, and, and what would you say would be like the essentials that they need to make sure that they continue doing? It's hard to say because like I, I've got a couple clients of mine that I told to not advertise because we have a database for the one has 25,000 people in messenger, email, and text. And he called me. He's like, what do you think? I'm like, bro, we have 25,000 people of which 8,000 have been in your place in the past six months. We're not gonna, We don't need any ads. We're going to double down on this. My team, uh, I added people to my team. We have 20 people. Uh, I went ahead and we had a meeting this morning for two hours. We have a, the coronavirus Google sheet that has every client and it has, okay, one of my employees only job is to make sure that every other day something high level is done, a text, a message, an email, something. And then we're making posts for them, all sorts of stuff we don't normally do. Yeah. But I would say it depends. Like that client, he's got 25,000 people. 
you know, one of them we sent a text to two days ago, 4,800 people, and they had two, $2,000 in sales in two days from that database. So look at what you have. Uh, and then if you do have an opportunity, you know, if you're a restaurant that's not pizza, you know, I told my pizza clients, the first thing people are going to get sick of in the next six to seven days is pizza. My wife and kids had pizza twice in the last two days. They ordered it once and then they ate it, you know, the next day the leftovers. Yeah. Uh, they're going to get tired of it. And at the same time, I'm a, I'm a nutritional diet. I don't do that great with my diet all the time, but I've got a gym at my house. I have a gym I can go work out at. I've already noticed myself eating like crap and I've already said, okay, better blend nutrition. I got to get a smoothie every day. I got to, I got to get my mind, you know, get my, my diet out of the gutter. And I think that's going to happen. So if you're a restaurant that's got different food options, one of my clients is a casual dining restaurant. I said, dude, don't highlight all your burgers. Highlight your grilled chicken, your, your steamed vegetables, your salads. Highlight things that people are going to be thinking about in four or five days. Like, oh, crap, I've already gained four pounds. Highlight <laughs> your pokeballs. Highlight your, your things of that nature. Yeah, definitely for sure. And I, I think like going back to the fine dining question, um, she's with a, an Italian fine dining place and they're, they're closed, um, the dining hall. So we, they actually sell pizza. So I told them like this week, like we have to promote pizza because that's what people are thinking of. And then next week we shift to, you know, your salads and your fresh, fresher items um, with chicken and steaks and things like that. But right now people are thinking pizza. And I think, um, so we're doing a, a, a pizza promotion right now. So definitely have it. It's not like one of those things you can just set it and forget it. Like this is changing every single day. So of course, like we're recording this and we can all go back and watch it in a week In a week from now, who knows what's going to be happening? We don't know. So we just have to be agile and make changes and um, make sure that we're still reaching out. So, um, and that's, that's challenging, but we can do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying right. Like, can we, I'm just saying like, you guys can, right. <laughs> so cool. Well, um, I appreciate you guys being on here. If you guys don't have any other questions, I may just hang on with Matt for a little bit and um, we may just talk about some, some other ideas. Um, but thank you, DJ, for, for being on here. I'm just gonna. You bet, Tracy. I think we're, um, here we go. I know we've still got a few other um, people watching. So I don't know if anybody else has any other, any other questions. Um, that we want to answer. I know Don Moore said, no, not going to get tired of pizza. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's I already I'm am. <laughs> you already are? Oh, yeah. That's funny. Um, so, Matt, I just, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, like, specific tips for emails and text. Like, what would you say that's going to stand out that because everybody is saying like, we have curbside now, we have delivery now, come on in. Like, is there anything like you would think is unique or different that's going to stand out with the mass amount of coronavirus emails people are getting? Don't do what everybody else is doing. I mean, I, I've, I've no, no, no lie. I've probably gotten, probably gotten somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 of the exact email. Same subject line, their logo at the top, the same format. Nobody's reading that. Yeah. I mean, consumers aren't reading it. You know, if you're going to put something out, one thing we're talking about with one of our customers, his message is identical the next two to four weeks, two to six weeks. It's third party delivering one, order on our website two, uh, pick up curbside service three. And what I told him we're doing is every day we're doing different, we're, we've went through, we've got about a hundred pictures. And we're going to every two days do a, uh, either a text, an email, or a messenger sequence. And we're changing. The message is similar. It's the same call to actions, but we're changing the pictures. So the yeah. curbside pickup might have this one day. The next day it's got this. Next day it got this. We're doing an email every two days for them. Yeah. And we're changing the subject line. We're changing the order of it. One day it's going to be curbside. Next curbside here. Then Uber Eats. And then this one. And the next day, it's, two days later, it's going to be a different order. Just changing up the messaging because you've got to stay in front of people. Right now, people are going to eat, at least where I'm at in Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, the last three or four days, people are eating a lot of groceries. They went, they went and spent, my wife spent $1,000 at Kroger. You know, she went, she went and spent wow. 200 bucks and then she had you know, enough for like two weeks. And she's like, is that good? I'm like, I don't know the answer, Christy. Is, could be two weeks, could be four weeks, could be two months. I have no clue. I said, if you do something, don't get stupid and go, buy a hundred things of something, let, you know, be smart about what we buy. So they went and they bought a variety 
of things that we'll use in two months, like pancake mix and rice that you know might need. Uh, but we've got groceries. I can tell you right now, we've cooked, we've eaten in our house more than we've eaten in our house in the past month. And I've still have eaten at a lot of restaurants and next week it's going to be the opposite that I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm done with this. We're not good. Cooks. <laughs> yeah. So that's good. Definitely wanting to like change up the messaging. I saw, um, Dawn is saying like gourmet pizza. That's a little pizza restaurant here in downtown Redlands. And, um, they did a post that I thought was really funny. It was a picture of a pizza box with a piece of a roll of toilet paper next to it. And it said with every curbside pickup, like with every to go order pizza, we're going to give you a roll of toilet paper. Um, and I just thought that was like cheesy, but funny. And it got a ton of engagement. People are just laughing. Like, I mean, we're just kind of like driving this toilet paper joke to the bone, but you know, it's, he actually was serious. Like he's like, people literally don't have toilet paper. He's like, we can actually start being more of like a wholesale grocer. Like we have access to these things. We can actually sell to our employees, like, like not mark up, but like help our employees get groceries and um, become like a little cash and carry. So we were kind of talking about that. Um, I thought that was an interesting idea for sure. Wh one other thing that I saw you post about was creating family size meals it, yeah. instead of just like using like, Oh no, this is our menu. Instead of being so like, this is what we do. It's like, you've got to think outside the box and creating like bigger menu items, like maybe a family pack or, um, like a, if you do pasta, like creating like a four to six person thing, because people aren't just going out to eat with their wife. Now they've got to feed like their kids or they want leftovers and, um, definitely feel like that's a, definitely yeah, one of the advantages in my opinion, and I actually have seen this and I've got clients that see this is, you know, Buca de Beppo is a good example of a place that we've got here locally. It's nationally. I don't know if you've got it there or not, but they, they have these huge servings and people take them home. They get it so they can take home leftover. That's why they eat there. Uh, I don't typically go to a, a lot like a wing joint or a pizza joint to have leftovers. I go there to eat and go home. Right. Uh, like one, a couple of my clients, we have a lot of barbecue restaurants. We have a, and I'm like, guys, pulled pork, pulled chicken, uh, you know, brisket, ribs, that all heats up great. And so you can, you can sell that and you're commenting again. So is that you? That real <laughs> I think someone on my team is, is like logged in. You know, it might even be my husband because the other day he asked if he could use my zoom room. He said he needed to use zoom for work. And I was like, sure. And so he was, that might be my husband. <laughs> there was two Tracy's. That would be scary. It'd be a like scary. Is, hey, you know, but I know the, I'm a lot, I'm a lot, but that's okay. But oh, same here. But looking at those opportunities, like one of my clients is a chicken tender brand. They have a couple locations that sell mainly chicken tenders, Texas toast mm -hmm. and, and small. They have big party trays. I'm like, dude, let's not market the party tray as a catering tray. Let's market as feeding your family for a week. You know, you get that in, you have dinner one night, you have lunch twice that week for the kids. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities like that. A lot yeah. of restaurants, especially Italian food, the lady who mentioned it earlier, and you can reheat pasta all day long. Right. So look yes, at that. might not be the right thing to promote, <laughs> steak reheated, but the pasta. Um, I actually, there's another person on here, Karen, I think you're still on here. Um, you own a coffee shop in Denver, paint and sip. So um, what are some things like, obviously, people can't come in right now to paint, um, but they could buy a gift card. I mean, Mother's Day is coming up, you know, promote like gift cards for, for Mother's Day or for like, like I'm telling you, people are going to want to get out of the house and go do something. Um, so that would be a good idea. Karen, what are, what? There was a coffee shop. Is she said coffee slop, coffee shop slash paint and sip. Okay. You know what paint and sip is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so totally the coffee, women like to do. <laughs> the coffee's a great a great opportunity for somebody to buy extra coffee. That's why Tall Coffee and Pouring yesterday. They've got these stacks of bags on their shelf. I occasionally buy one, but you know what? If they text me tomorrow and say, "Hey, next time you're in, grab a grab a bag of coffee in case you need it for home the next week while you don't while you're at home more often," I'm like, "Oh right. shit, a coffee." Yeah. Uh, sits exactly. You hit the nail on the head, Tracy. People are planning like. I, I'm scared to see New Orleans and Vegas in May or June when this thing releases. Like, I want to stay away because it's going to be like spring break for adults everywhere. Oh, my gosh. And so we're painting the same thing. I mean, you, you got the same exact opportunity. Hey, we're waiting for you. We're closed down. You can't come hang with us. But you can buy a gift card in reserve. We're taking, you're taking uh, you know, XYZ just to get cash flow in. Sure. Cool. Well, I have another question for you. So – 
obviously what, what you and I do is we help our local businesses build their list. We help them get more email, text, and messenger subscribers so that they can have a database of people they can reach out to and market to and invite back, right? So what about people that have no list right now? What, it, what would you say is the fastest way? Well, two questions. What's the fastest way that they could start building their list? And two, is it worth it right now to like invest in getting like a whole system set up, like what we do for people, or is it better to just make sure they get cash flow? Depends on their situation. I have a guy that just has two Minchie's ice cream places in uh, up in Michigan who just signed on two days ago. He's going live this weekend. You know, he's looking at it like, Hey, I don't have this. He's actually been talking to me since December. <laughs> and two week, last week he, he texted me. He's like, man, I wish you would have signed up. And I said, you still can. Because you think there's an opportunity. I'm like, People are going to be on their phone. Our whole concept is getting them to engage. Uh, I've got people right now getting 30 to 40% opt-in. So if you've got a, a company that doesn't have a database, put, you know, take 500 bucks right now with some of the, with some of the activity on there. People are at home. You're, you'll be able to get comments, comment below uh, the, the thing you're going to do when you, when, when the, when the, the, the dams break or comment below your favorite pizza stop. Just like we do and put them into the same stuff. One thing we've done with our clients that just started running and we actually altered a bunch of them is the offer is daily. So if you get the buy one, get one free burrito, the buy one, get one free ice cream, whatever it is, when they redeem it, four hours later, they get it again. Because my clients are like, hey, whatever I can take the next two or three weeks, I'll take. Yeah. And so if you're an ice cream shop, like this, you know, one of our guys, and you know, next thing you know, somebody comes and gets ice cream, boom, here you go. Here's the offer again. We'll see you soon. And every day, click this button and try and see what else has. <laughs> So yeah, there's no better time than now. They always say that, you know, best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Uh, now you've got to look at your cash flow. You got to be smart. You got to judge. Like I had a client of mine that closed down. He looked at it. He was a fine dining steakhouse and he looked at the numbers and he's like, I, I my food doesn't travel well. I don't want to change my menu and mess up my brand. This is who we are. I have the money. I'm going to close down completely and just clean the restaurant for a month. You know, my employees are going to get laid off. You know, we're going to do as much as we can internally. But his comment was he looked at, because he looked at marketing. He's like, Matt, what do you guys think about running these ads for this, this, and this? And we talked about it. And he said, you know what? If I do that, let's say best case scenario, I get 10 to 15 grand in sales. That's five to 7,000 in food costs. That's three to 4,000 in labor. Do I want to do all that work for an extra four or five grand in cash flow this month? He's like, I really don't. He's like, I'm just going to close down. I'm going to clean the heck out of my place. We're going to do some remodeling. Uh, we're going to plan when this opens back up bigger and better and go from there. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. I mean, I think you're right. It's, it's situational for every different type of business for sure. Um, so Karen is messaging us here in the chat. She said, um, we did have to close for two weeks due to a possible contamination. But we're going to post new classes. She's been reluctant to do class by video, but we've given her some good ideas, some stir crazy uh, video class to do with your family while at home. Um, mm -hmm. I want to tell you something. I do have a, a gym. They're a Krav Maga gym and which they focus on. It's kind of like martial arts, but it's self-defense. Yeah. Like if somebody comes at you with a gun in your car, like, what do you do? Like they teach like knife skills and it's like really cool. And we were actually about to launch an ad campaign for them two weeks ago for getting them to get more members to their physical location in Orlando. Um, but with everything happening, obviously like the gym is not the place to go right now. And so we, luckily they've actually been in the process of building on an online membership. So they've already, they already have like all the lessons and courses like kind of built. They just were kind of waiting to launch that. And so now like we're having to like put our feet to the fire and make sure that we launch this online membership. So what they're doing is they have a Facebook group and they're going to be streaming live videos into the Facebook group and it's paid. So the only way to get into the group is if you have a membership with them and then they're going to have access to their Kajabi modules. So they'll be able to go and do the sessions one by one. A lot of their members are advanced, like they already have their physical members and they've been able to transition those members into online members, which is great. But with, um, with all the changes, now they're going to be, we're going to have to be advertising to find new people that may not be as familiar with Krav Maga. So this is a great way to do it from home. Um, so we're actually having to totally shift their entire business model to be online. Um, you know, there's a local dance studio near me that I, I actually, I, I don't know if you know this, I'm a dancer, Matt, did you know that? 
take like jazz and tap, uh, modern hip hop, hip hop, and not, not, I'm not so good at hip hop, but um, some of the others. So anyway, it's obviously like people can't go into class. So she's like, yep, class is back at usual. Like we're just gonna, you sign up for classes like normal, but we're gonna be teaching the class. We're all gonna be online at the same time. And you're just gonna have to do it in your home, like while you learn. So I just think it's cool, like seeing business owners, like figuring stuff out, how to, how to manage it online. So, um, cool. Yeah. cool. Well, I, I appreciate your time. I know we're kind of hitting at the hour time here, but, um, I just wanted to ask you those few other questions. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you reach out to me. Um, I'm here. I, I'm open to, you know, helping you guys out. So appreciate thank you. Thank you, Matt. You're awesome. Yeah. See you guys later.